What's the best fitness approach for high school students? Watch this. Our next caller is Sarah from Connecticut. What's up, Sarah? How can we help you? Hi. Um, so I just want to start off by saying I am so grateful that you guys are letting me ask my question, and I am so excited to be asking it. I am a longtime fan. I've been around since Adam was competing. Whoa. And um, you guys have truly been like the magic pill of like, my health and fitness journey. And so I just want to say thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Sal is a pill to work with too, in case you're wondering. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so my question is, right um, I'm a high school biology teacher and I've been given the opportunity to pilot and create a biology of sports performance class at my school. Cool. Um, so this is truly an opportunity for me to create a dream job so I want to do it right and make sure it's as successful as possible. It's meant to be geared toward the high school athlete so they can learn how to maximize their performance and their sport through training, nutrition, and recovery. Although the regular student will also be allowed entry into the class. I'm very excited to say that my principal cleared this for a year long science elective class and will be allowed to access the school's brand new weight room two days a week during class time. Uh, we will spend the other three days of the week in the classroom. The goal for students by the end of the year is to design and implement a five-week program working towards a goal they identify to help them better perform at their sport. The biology portion of the class will be focusing on anatomy and physiology of relevant body systems, and we'll be working on improving scientific literacy by unpacking and analyzing scientific studies some of which I plan to grab from what you guys have discussed on the show. Um, so I need your help in planning the sequence of how to teach the fundamentals of training principles to students. There's the classroom portion of things like how to manage frequency, volume, and intensity, movement patterns such as squat, hinge, press, and pull, movement patterns in different planes of movement, such as the sagittal plane, the transverse plane, and rotational movements. Mm -hmm the difference in benefits of compound versus isolation movements, the difference in benefits of bilateral and unilateral movements, and eventually how to possibly write an effective training program. Wow, um, then fun. there's the portion yeah, of teaching proper form and mechanics of lifts in the weight room. Um, so I will also have access to bands and PVC pipes in the classroom for working on mobility, isometrics, and things like trigger sessions. I want to do my best to blend a theory, what the science says, and reality to give students a deep understanding of how they can be the best athletes they can be. Um, so my question is, how would you recommend to sequence teaching training to kids both in the classroom and weight room simultaneously as theory and implementation don't always line up? Uh, this is awesome. Yeah, I, this is so, I wish I had you. Yeah. Everything you just said is awesome. Yeah, and like Justin said, you obviously have been listening to the show for a long time. Uh, this is way cool. You know what, um, Justin, what do you think about sharing with her what you're doing right now with the the football team, the high school football team? Yeah. I think the the way you laid that out with a the isometric foundation and then you build upon that. You want mm -hmm. If you want something with like a philosophy or a theory behind it on like how we would teach somebody those, I think what you're doing yeah. with them is a, a pretty solid foundation. I think what you're proposing is much more comprehensive. Um, what I had to kind of do was scale back in terms of what I could establish pretty quickly without having to uh, educate and explain too much. Um, uh, be, and that was like a big hurdle for me because I want to establish basically everything you just mentioned. It's amazing. <laughs> like I, I, I think this is a whole course that, you know, kids could go through and find a ton of value with. Uh, so for me, it was really just about like, hitting um you know the biggest offenders as quickly as possible and that's really just like body communication and, and stability and control of their body um, and so that's where I, I found a lot of value in isometrics and in, in placing them in uh, these positions and these split stance positions in um you know positions where they have to build strength and and generate force uh, so we've been going through like the first month month and a half we're going to be doing isometric heavy and then doing a unilateral in conjunction with that to uh, address a lot of those things right out of the gates uh and then progressing them further into uh like more of our five by five type mm -hmm. style with compound lifts um and so i mean i have i have this whole thing as a potential uh full-blown program for student athletes uh you know in the making but that's something that uh you know maybe we can communicate 
offline later and I can kind of show you the full sort of uh, scope of it. Yeah, Sarah, you know, um, I'm going to speak from a student perspective. Okay. So first off, I wish I could take this class. I wish I had yeah. you as a teacher Yeah. in high school. It sounds super awesome. I know the challenge with teaching anything to anyone is, can I get them excited about it? Because obviously an excited, interested student is going to absorb way more information than one that's maybe not so excited and not so interested. So you've been listening to the show for a long time. And so you already know that our formula is entertain and then also throw in information. And we did that on purpose because we, we learned as, as trainers that most of our clients were not fitness fanatics. I mean, if I, if I was talking to a fitness fanatic, I could get real deep in the weeds with the science and talk specifically about training and adaptation, and they would love it. Like if I did that to my clients, I would have lost half of them, you know, three months in. So I had to really figure out how to communicate to them in effective ways. What I'm going to recommend to you is to use a lot of analogies. Analogies are really cool. Like an example would be, the analogy that we use about the central nervous system and and, the, and muscles and, and their relationship, and I like to use the speaker versus the amplifier analogy. Another thing would be to, to talk about myths, right? So when you have your students in there, you could talk about some of the most common myths, like um, lifting weights makes you bulky, right? That's a big myth. And, um, you know, how to speed up your metabolism. Like, I think that would get kids kind of excited. Like, what do you mean faster metabolism? What does that look like? And I thought, you know, lifting weights did make me bulky. You may even want to bring up contributions of different, uh, you know, types of exercise or sports into kind of what you're talking about. So I would have a picture of Arnold. What have bodybuilders taught us about how the body adapts to exercise? Like what has powerlifters taught us? And you can use celebrities so that the kids can be like, oh, I know Lance Armstrong. Like what did we learn from that kind of training and how does that work and how does that make my body perform, you know, even better? You might even put something up and say, why do we find attractive bodies attractive, right? So that's kind of a, a lore. Like, what is that? What are, you, what are you talking about? Well, why do we think men with broad shoulders and tight waists, like, well, that may show signs of better performance and higher testosterone levels. And why do we find, you know, uh, you know, these types of things to look better than others? There's a biological component. I think those things would make people very interested in, in kind of what you're talking about. But I honestly, you ran down the list of the stuff you're going to talk about. Yeah. I can't think of anything else yeah. that I would add really aside from just trying to make it yeah. kind of to hook them, Engaging. right? Engaging. Yeah, yeah. Hook them with the myths and the, you know, maybe ask them like, you know, what's a better way to, if somebody's trying to get lean and lose weight, what's a better approach? And then you can put like running every yeah. single day, lifting weights or whatever. And then you can cool. go in and kind of counter some of the myths because that gets people, you know, hooked right out the I gates. I like the example of your different avatars and you can make it very simple in terms of like what typically like their training protocol would right, look right. like as a difference just because of what you brought up with them trying to create their own program. It'd be cool to put those examples there just to give them some, some kind of baseline. Right. For every one of these uh, adaptations that you went through, which I think are all the ones that we'd want to cover in a foundational, uh, you know, class like this i would do exactly that but before we get like too deep in the weeds because this literally we could turn this into like a three-hour conversation right here <laughs> yeah. um i mean that'd be great i wouldn't mind at all. well this is what i'm going to do for you so and, and i think this is the best place for us to start um i i think all of us are when you were reading it off you should see the looks on all of our faces everybody was like oh this is so cool um I, we would love to help you so I think the I think the the next step for us to help you would be it, it already sounds like you're on the right track. I think to start to to lay out what the curriculum mm -hmm. is going to look like and then running it by Justin or one of us or all of us. Um, you can email us personally. Uh, when we when we hang up, I'll have Jerry because you're in contact with her. Give you our personal emails, and then what we can do is just kind of you know as you're working through it uh, and you and you put stuff together, we can give our feedback yeah. of, oh, I love that, or maybe add this to it. Um, I think that's probably where we'd be the most valuable versus giving you all these like vague, random ideas. Yeah. You know, you know, it was really cool too. Totally. You know, just something else, Sarah, is that when you show, when you can show a student a change immediately in how their body's moving, it's really exciting. So I remember one time I took one of my first certifications and they were talking about how you could get a muscle to elongate easier. So what they did is they put us in this on the floor. They had us do a hamstring stretch. You could only go so far. And then they said, now I want you to push against the person who's stretching your hamstring and hold that for 30 seconds, which I did, and then relax. And all of a sudden, I got three more inches of flexibility immediately, right? So I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so weird. You know, it's like almost like doing a, an experiment in class 
where you're showing you know the effect of something right away like that kind of stuff gets people so engaged and so interested in, in kind of what's going on so I, I can't stress that enough like if I was and I did I did volunteer a few times and teach uh, nutrition and exercise to students and I, I really get them excited by doing stuff like that because once I got them engaged it was the rest was you know well I mean easy. I think we're we're throwing a bunch of things at Sarah that she's probably good at she's a fucking yeah. teacher right yeah. so I think what you're looking from us is the expertise on how you program the curriculum mm -hmm. and uh, and I definitely think that we can help and I and Let's I do it and I would like to help you so yeah. and I think the place that we start is you begin laying out what is you know what is you know first month or week of the curriculum you're planning on it to look like and then allow us to kind of put our two cents in um, and, and do that and I think this is great because Justin is literally in this world right now we were on the yeah. last uh, we were flying from Utah just last week or the week before and we were all looking over what he was creating for these high school students right now. So this is kind of where we're at right now. And I think that uh, maybe you guys could definitely help each other out. Yeah, that would be, that would be very much appreciated. Um, Cause that, that is where I'm struggling. It's I, like, I know all these principles for myself and I know how to apply them to myself, but in terms of like how to teach it to kids. So it's understandable and digestible is where I'm struggling. So like, the order of how to teach it to them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. No, yep. no, no. Yeah. We'd love to get involved. So yeah. Appreciate your questions there. And thank you so much for what you're doing. These kids are really lucky. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. How, how fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had that class. Yeah. I know. Right. It's, you know, though, it's really exciting that, um, that we're seeing stuff like this. I mean, it, it's, I mean, we, God, when we all were in school, like, you know, PE was the extent of, you know, any sort of, you know, anatomy or physical education that you got. And it was so generic. I just think if you teach kids about their bodies and what's happening and here's why you feel this way and here's what happens when you do this and that, mm -hmm. I think it's so valuable. That's like, this is like valuable life information because when I get them as adults, as a trainer yeah. and they hire me, we have to unpack so oh, much nonsense. They just, they just don't know anything about yeah. what's going on and how this works and why do I feel this way? And it's like, my God, we could have learned that. A long well, time I love, I really loved your idea of give these kids a, you know, a famous person or athlete. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I was they, picturing yeah, it. That's yeah. perfect. Right. Like literally you could, you know, and that's how I think I would write this curriculum. And let's, let's, the way Justin programmed to give like a generic overview is like, you know, he, he did a lot of, uh, central nervous system training at the beginning, right? So yeah. isometric, right? So that's the foundation of it, right? Mm -hmm. So then I would I would pick like a, a, a sport or a, or a person that they, you can connect that to and say, what did they teach us about that? And be like the benefits of isometrics and then break down all the science that supports that. And then so for this first month, kids, we are going to be learning some of the best isometric moves and this is how we would apply it to your working out. This yeah. is why we're doing it. Here's where we learned it from. Yeah, or, or imagine you have a picture of like the rock. Like how does uh, how do you guys think the rock works out? How he actually works out? What could we? What, what do you think he could do different? What can we learn from that? What about this particular celebrity, this person? Because yeah. it just gets the kids like, oh, I, I follow that person. I, I want to see what they're doing, you know, yeah. just to get them engaged. Yeah, so. and it's it's trial and error too. So she doesn't have to put so much pressure on this to be right. perfect. Like honestly, that's the biggest thing I've learned is uh, as I'm going through it, I'm writing notes even to the program that I had written down on paper. And this is just something we learned as trainers, anyways, is that. You know, we iterate. We constantly iterate yeah. based off of the feedback. And yep. so, um, you know, it's going to find that it's obviously a different audience um, and and they're going to respond a little bit differently. And like you said, I think the celebrity angle, you're going to find, you know, moments like that where it's more relatable. Definitely lean into those moments. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.